on Fox Sports Australia. It's great to see you again. Oh, it's great to see me too. <laughs> <laughs> the double champ is back. Now, Henry, we haven't seen you in action uh, since UFC 249 when the pandemic started. Now, Henry, you walked away that night. Can I ask, why did you retire and why are we seeing you back this week? Because you know why? Because it gets boring when you've accomplished everything. Youngest Olympic champion in UFC history. Two UFC belts defended both will defeat the great Demetrius Johnson, TJ Dillashaw, Dominic Cruz, three Hall of Famers. What else is there to do when you've accomplished everything? You know what? Everybody's dream as a fighter is to leave ungraced, leave undefeated, leave, leave with the gold medal, leave with two UFC belts. And that's why, man, it was, uh, it was that. It was, it was losing a little bit of the love of competition, man. Like, I want to conquer other things in life. And that's just the reality. G'day, Henry. Rob here. Um, I've got to say, and I, I've said this earlier in the night as well, I think your evolution in the game is bar none. I think you have the best evolution, the best growth in the game from when you entered to when you left. It was night, a night and day transition. Every fight got better. Since that first DJ fight, you made adjustments. You made some changes. You came back every fight, tweaked and tweaked and tweaked until you left the sport as, as one of the, the, the all-time greats. Tell me. Tell me, what was the secret? What was the mentality you had to accomplish this? Well, okay, can I tell you something, though, Robert? Because you're going to be in the same position now. I tell people all the time, I'm not loyal to myself. I'm not loyal to my team. You know what I'm loyal to, Robert? What's is this? I'm loyal to the dream. And when you're loyal to the dream, and when you're loyal to the dream, you'll do whatever it takes. I mean, after I lost Demetrius Johnson, I, I fired my whole staff. I started traveling the world. I started looking into other things and other other coaching and things and adding sense to it. I wasn't that could become the best in the world. It's almost like I was a Ferrari at that time and I didn't have those mechanics. Mm. You know, so we traveled the world, we went to Holland, went to Brazil, we went to different parts, strategically went back and really saw what it is that maybe the best in the world in wrestling. You know, so it, uh, so, so it's that, man. It's like, like I said, man, I'm, like I'm low to the dream. So I was able to really make those adjustments. And it's the most minor little things, positions, composure, really understanding distance, fakes, feints, and then having the ability to, to fight everybody a little different, you know? And I think that's what's really uh, has separated me from, from, you know, from the time that I lost Demetrius Johnson till now. I, I, can, I can see that. I can, you know, you, you telling me that, like things are, are, are coming all together. All the pieces of the puzzle are coming to the, together. I can see that transition into understanding and really delving into the game and adapting all new skill sets that, that you took from places to, to accomplish what you did as like a really full uh, set of skills, you know, the, 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 the real deal, the full house. I've got to ask though, then if you're chasing the dream, you accomplished that dream or is the dream bigger? Is that why you came back? The, the dream is bigger. And the reason why I'm even coming back is because, you know what, well, guys, I love you guys in Australia, but I'm here to take down Alexander Volkanovsky, Alexander, the average down under. And that's why I'm coming back. You know, my original goal was to just go up to 145 pounds and challenging it. But it, I have to go through, uh, I have to go through, you know, uh, Al Jalane Sterling, which I like to call him Al Jermaine Denzel. And then I got to go through <laughs> Sean O'Mell. Then I want Volkanovski. You know, well, I got Ronald McDonald, Sean O'Mell. And then I'm going after Volkanovski because I know nobody believes that I could beat him. And they said that when, when, I, when I became the youngest in history to win a Olympic gold medal, nobody believed that I could do it. Nobody believed that I could beat Demetri Johnson after getting knocked out. I love pushing the envelope. So even those persona guys, like you can see the persona all you guys want, but in reality, it really is me. I'm here to challenge myself. I'm here to go, and I'm here to make a whole lot of damn money. <laughs> well, we've normally got Alexander Volkanovsky on the panel. Now, we're very happy to have Josh here, but it is a shame that Alex missed this one. i got to ask, how do you see yourself performing in that challenge against Alex eventually? I think I think the problem the problems that I could cause Volkanovski is my speed and even my size. He's not accustomed to he, Alexander Volkanovski is not accustomed to fighting people that are shorter than him. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why I say that too is the first time I lost to Demetrius Johnson. I was like, "Fuck that dude is short." 
You know, literally, he was he's about an inch and a half shorter than me. But I remember that time that I respected him that much more because I was like, man, I thought I was going to have my way with him. You know, I just think my IQ, and I, I think, and, and I respect Alexander. I really do. I respect his IQ. I love the fact that he fights everybody different, too. I, I was just talking to talking to Korean Zombie downstairs, and we were game planning for him. I was like, I thought this guy was going to kick you. He came back and just used his hands. You see what I'm saying? So little things like that, what he was able to do with even with a guy like Islam. But I do believe, you know, and the reason why I do want to fight Volkanovski, it's simply because I respect him. As much stuff, as much crap as I could talk, I want that, guys. You know what I'm saying? And if he can give me some humble pie, I, I challenge him for it. Hey, Henry. Josh here. Uh, I've got a two-part question for you. Uh, both, obviously, you and Al Jermaine are probably the most elite grapplers in the division. What, what separates you two? My, what separates me from Al Jermaine is an Olympic gold medal in D3 wrestling. You know, he's, uh, he's, his, his, my entries, my entries are a lot better. My distance recognition and my composure, all those minor things that people tend to overlook. I'm just different in that sense. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm just not, yeah. It's like, if size matter, then that means, you know, giraffe would be the king of the jungle. I mean, look at you guys. Look at Alexander Volkanovsky. He was able to become pound for pound. He's, he's five, six. When you know how to use your tools and you really dissect game plans and you have the ability and the talent and you're able to fight people different with different game plans, that's what separates people. You know, there's there's a reason why guys like Jones, Demetrius Johnson, Jean Wei Li, Yuri Prohachka, like the best in the world, you know, Davidson Figueroa, how can these guys win world titles come in to learn from me? Because they, they see the mind behind the cringe, you know what I mean? Like, like the reality is I'm just a winner. And I'm just better. In, I'm just better than Alexander in every sense of the way, in every area. Second part of the question was, uh, what happened to your motivational Mondays on Instagram? And I'm missing that. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I, got to, I got to motivate your boy Robert Whitaker. Robert, you already know. You know, you you see my fight feedback that I did on you. I think there's a lot that I do believe you can reclaim that 185 pound title. Fine, bring the engineers man to you. You know, learning. Learning how to use your leverage, man, like jumping into other positions rather than losing them. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Recognizing that distance a little bit more, adjusting your stance, that lead leg. I mean, that could be the biggest difference for Robert Whitaker when he beats Israel out of sign. And I said it before, there's that, that's I've never chased anybody, Robert, but there is one guy that I really like to teach and really have him really uh, dissect this, uh, you know, beyond the cringe. It's actually you, bro. So there you have your motivational Monday. I appreciate on, on that. Tuesday. <laughs> well, Henry Cejudo, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. We really appreciate your company today. Uh, congratulations as well on the, the news of uh, your incoming baby as well. And uh, we wish you all the best this weekend. Also, thanks to Captain Eric for joining us as well. <laughs> yeah, he's right here, man. You guys show him some love. <laughs> show <laughs> Captain Eric some love. Oh, yeah. 288, the return of the GOAT. Triple C has a new list. And on May 6th, we're about to scratch the Funk Master off that list. Can't wait wow. to see it. Thanks, guys. All the best. <laughs> there he was, Triple C, one of the greatest of all time, Robert Whitaker. Would you take Henry up uh, on that offer? Definitely, definitely. It would be a privilege to be able to pick his brain and mm. see, see what he can give me to make me better. That is, that is my dream of the sport, It's just to become the perfect version of myself in in combat sports in the fight game so uh yeah i let him get his weekend done and you know i'll get my july fight out of the way and then I, I would i would be honored to be able to go over there and to work with him you know work with that mind the duo that we didn't know we needed it's always great to <laughs> have a chat with henry 